It was a tiring few seasons to make top grade again, but you actually had a shot at rugby union. How was that? Yeah, it was tough, man. Like I, I, I it was a rush decision. It was a rash decision. I, you know, I, I was in a financially a tough spot. As I said, there was things agreed to that you know didn't come through and everything like that. I was working two jobs. I was working in a bar and trying to train full time with the Broncos. Um, yeah, it's just a rash decision, and I was I was getting desperate. You know, I, I didn't want to go to another NRL club because I had this weird sense of loyalty to the Broncos, and it's stupid. Um, yeah, I went to Union, and, and the seven system there, it's great, but it's just it's just not a team. Involved. You've got to be fully individually motivated in sevens because they're all from around Australia and there wasn't enough money for it to be a constant thing where you train together so you just got to go and train yourself you got to go out I'm going to go and do fitness myself hectic fitness and that's what a lot of people don't know about sevens is like fitness is the key that's it everything outside of that doesn't really matter as long as you can catch and pass the ball and you're fit and you're willing to put yourself through that you you probably make some kind of go out of out of the sevens and yeah I just I just didn't enjoy that environment you know I, I yeah I just didn't enjoy the environment of having to don't get me wrong Australian rugby union were fantastic to me great um Great organisation, very classy, very respectful. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just didn't have the passion. That was purely me that had the issue there. I just didn't enjoy it. I had no passion for it. Um, that, yeah, that, so that was all on my own about why that didn't succeed. After not making union, you played for both the Broncos and the Dragons. You couldn't squeeze out as many first grade games as you would have liked. But can you put it down to something as to why you didn't play as much consistent football as you would have liked? Well, it was just purely because, so when I was at the Broncos, Whenever I was at the Broncos, I'd be playing usually first grade until, you know, Anthony Griffin took over and he had his, his preferences. Um, and, and when I was at the Dragons, I had so much hectic shit off field that I shouldn't have even been a part of the rugby league squad that that was why I wasn't playing first grade. Um, you know, so, yeah, the, the last year at the Dragons... Uh, when I was sorry, when I was at the Dragons, yeah, there was so much stuff going off field that it was, I, should, I shouldn't have been playing footy. I should have said, look, I need, I just need to get away because there's so much bad stuff, like so much mental stuff had happened to me over the last few years, like you know, being lied to and stuff off the field, like bad relationships and clubs wanting to get rid of me. And I just, as I said, because I didn't have the base of a passion to play the game, when that stuff happens, I'm like, man, this stuff, this, this is too much. I don't, I don't enjoy this anymore. So yeah, that, that was an issue for, for the Dragons. Like I just shouldn't have been playing footy. And then when I went back to the Broncos, so I'd, I'd retired, I'd quit or whatever. And they called me and said, look, do you want to come back in 2013? Um, yeah, I worked my way back into the, like I was, Literally, my first trial match, I was probably the best winger at the club within my first trial match, but because I'd come back and I'd only done six weeks of, of pre-season, they were like, well, look, we can't, let, we can't jump, you know, you can't go ahead of these guys that have been here all pre-season. Yeah, so I worked my way back into the first grade side. They named me at two. Um, so usually when you're not going to, usually when you're maybe not playing, you get named at 18, and the, the person playing will get named at two. They named me at two. Yep, you're going to play. It's been a thousand days since you've played. I was in the media, told all my family, everyone's excited. Uh, Jack Reed's out for three weeks or four weeks or whatever. Two days before the game, um, Hook calls me in the office and he says, um, oh, sorry, mate, Jack's going to play. We're not going to play her. And I was like, <sighs> so I was disappointed at that. But then not only, did, not only did that happen, he dropped the other winger, Maranta, and brought up Aaron Whitchurch that wasn't even a winger a forward and put him in the wing and I was like man I can't do this I was on like 30 grand a year like getting paid nothing living like living at home on the Gold Coast driving to Brisbane every day um, then driving to Redcliffe for reserve grade training then driving back from Redcliffe back to home waking up at five, five in the morning driving back up to Brisbane and I was getting paid 30 grand a year like just broke as anything I was like man stuff this like I can't do this anymore so yeah that's what that's kind of what happened and yeah you know put it this way I know that if I wanted to and I was really passionate about it. I could go back and play first grade if I wanted to, but it's just a matter of there's just no money. There's no money in it and there's no future. What are you building for? I go back and I'll play, instead of 42 NRL games, I'll play 60 NRL games. What does that even matter? Whereas I've left like so much money on the table building my own stuff because I went back to play NRL. So it's more of an ego thing is why, why I would want to continue playing. So you're saying in regards to that, if the coach likes plays rather than skills was well they might suit him so like Dale Copley he's a bit like so he was the guy that was getting um, played in front of me and don't get me wrong he's a great player but he's a bigger he's a bigger winger he um, you know he might offer something that maybe he likes his scoots better than mine or something like that there's just certain coaches that like certain things and feel they so for example Aaron Whitchurch getting 
put, so Lauren, Lachlan Moranta gets dropped. Aaron Wichos hasn't played wing all year. He's a forward, but he pulls him up because Manu Badavai is playing against him and he thinks because he's big-ish and I'm smallish, I won't be able to mark him. But then Manu Badavai put three tries on him because he's not a winger. So there's, you know, there's, there's coaching decisions that happen that are very specific to that team. And they're not, they're not wrong or right. They're just that, his way of coaching. And so, yeah, sometimes players can, can miss out because they don't suit the coach's what he wants. Whereas Ivan Henjak really liked me as a player because I did exactly what he said. You know, he could tell me, go do this, this, and this, and I'd go on out and do it. And so, yeah, it's, it's just, it's preferences. And it's not that it's wrong and not that it's right. It's just preferences in coaching. So is that why, looking at the power of this team, they've got a whole bunch of youngsters that come in. So throughout the year, you've just seen you know, Jamie Sal getting, you've got Nathan Cleary coming up, all good players in their own right. Yeah. Do you think that that plays a part because Hook is their coach at the moment? Hook has his specific way of coaching. And it's not right or like, you know, I, it's not right or wrong and you know I can't sit here and judge him I'm not a coach he's got his own experience going on but they're decisions that I wouldn't do and they're decisions you know he just got his way and there's Wayne has his way of coaching you know he might uh, pull in a much older veteran that may be not as good as a young guy but he knows what he can do and so that's coaches have very specific ways of coaching that a lot of people don't see um, Wayne for example usually holds off on young guys as long as he can whereas a lot of Sydney clubs they'll put them in give them interviews go out and do this they become superstars before they've even played 10 games Wayne never does that put it this way last year Anthony Milford was ridiculous if he was at any Sydney club he would be a superstar in the paper every single week he's at the Broncos you didn't hear a peep out of him because Wayne is a master at Let's just, well, I'm just going to keep you down here so that you don't... I remember when I made them, I had my debut, scored the 75-metre try, ran for 277 metres, like, played outstanding, you know. Scored, I think it was the third best try of the year. As soon as I walked off the field, I'm pretty sure the media manager walked up to me and said, you won't be playing first grade next week. Just to make sure that just, just level you out a bit here. So, you know, there, there are so much stuff that goes on. That, I mean, it's, and it's just professional sport. It's just professional sport. Professional club. Yep, that's that's why Wayne's so great because he, he keeps his he keeps his stars like really coddled not coddled but just keeps them out of out of reach out of reach and and all that media stuff like I remember it was um, 2008 and I was just on a run scoring try after try after try and I played the Bulldogs and to anyone else's eyes um, so there were opportunities that usually I would easily put away because I was a good finisher but I just missed these opportunities. I didn't drop the ball or anything, but I was just off my game by a little bit. Wayne pulled me aside and he goes, you've been reading the papers, haven't you? And I was like, you know what, I have been reading the papers. And he goes, mate, don't read the papers. What are you doing to yourself? Next week, came out, scored one of the, I think it was against the Roosters, like started killing it again. So he's just so good at reading young men and knowing exactly what they want to hear and need to hear. Like for example, he pulled me and Darius into a room and me and Darius are very similar. We grew up in the same area. You know, we've had plenty of, we're very, very similar in a sense of how we approach our rugby league. Um, he's probably a bit more meticulous and more passionate about it, and that's what gave him a big advantage. But when it comes to like focusing your whole life on the footy, he's, that, he's fully dedicated to that. But he pulled us into a room um, close to the end when we were making our run in 2008. And he said, look guys, I know you're not aggressive guys that want to go out and hurt people. I, that's not who you are. You don't want to hurt someone, and I get that. But why don't you replace that regression with the same passion that you just have, the same fire to be excellent. Replace that, and that will take, you don't need to be aggressive, you can just be passionate. And I was like, man, that's exactly what I want to hear. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to go friggin' shoulder charge some guy and hurt him. And it's the same with Darius. And look at Darius, he's the perfect example of that. You know, he's meticulous, perfect, everything a perfect footy player should be. And he doesn't go out and try and hurt anyone. He doesn't, you know, uh, try and shot people, but he never makes an error, never drops a ball. He's not trying to offload out the back all the time. And that's, what he's, that's why he's so brilliant, because he's just meticulous and perfect in everything he does.